workflow restriction therapy following knee surgery. Indications, safety considerations, and post-operative protocol. BFR works by reducing or totally occluding blood flow to the targeted muscles, creating an anaerobic environment, which promotes muscle hypertrophy through stimulation of protein synthesis, myogenic satellite cell proliferation, and type 2 muscle fiber activation and mobilization. BFR is advantageous in immediate post-op conditions for increasing muscular strength through low-level resistance and counteracting muscular atrophy. But therapy can only be utilized for improvements in acute conditions while carrying the additional risks of increased muscular pain and prolonged swelling. BFR is run by a personalized tourniquet system which is connected to a tourniquet cuff through a hose, ultimately applying a pressure value tailored specific to each patient. The multifunction buttons are used for setup and navigation through the LCD screen of the personalized tourniquet system and the inflation deflation buttons are utilized for pressure application during low resistance exercise. From the main screen, there are four multifunction buttons. The pressure adjustment function allows the modification of the pressure set point upon inflation of the cuff. The time adjustment function enables modification of the set inflation and rest time set points. The PTP function determines the patient specific personalized tourniquet pressure after determining the limb occlusion pressure specific to the patient. Once the cuff has been inflated and deflated, the stats function will display a summary of inflation history and parameters. Prior to cuff application, a sleeve should be pulled over the area to help protect from wrinkling, pinching, or shearing of the skin and soft tissues. The cuff may then be slid onto the thigh and over the sleeve. The cuff should reside in the proximal third of the thigh and should be secured tight enough so that only two finger widths can penetrate the cuff to thigh interface. Connect the personalized tourniquet system to the cuff using the hose assembly. Instruct the patient to lie on their back and press the PTP multifunction button. The cuff will then inflate and begin measuring the limb occlusion pressure, or LOP. During this phase, the system is determining the minimum pressure required to stop the flow of arterial blood. Upon completion, the screen will display the limb occlusion pressure, the calculated personalized tourniquet pressure, and the percentage of limb occlusion pressure used to calculate the personalized tourniquet pressure. To obtain the personalized tourniquet pressure, the patient-specific limb occlusion pressure must first be acquired. This value is then adjusted by the personalized tourniquet pressure percentage, which can be configured between a minimum of 40% and a maximum of 80%. In this case, the percentage was set at 80% applied to a limb occlusion pressure value of 157, yielding a personalized tourniquet pressure of 125. If at any point a signal error is displayed, either being no signal, noisy signal, cuff error, or unable to determine LOP, check the hose connection, reapply the tourniquet snugly, and repeat the personalized tourniquet pressure determination, ensuring no movement of the thigh, hose, or tourniquet system occurs. BFR may be prescribed for patients in either post-operative condition of restricted weight bearing or full weight bearing. Patients should transition from low load activity exercises during the restricted weight bearing phase when they are at an elevated risk of muscle atrophy to building muscle strength by body weight closed kinetic chain exercises once cleared through to weight bearing protocols. Exercise volume, including the number of sets and repetitions, should focus on building muscle endurance, utilizing a high number of repetitions and short rest periods in between sets. Once sufficient strength and hypertrophy gains have been made, the clinician can discontinue BFR use for the development of muscular power.